and I have a huge pack of um, business cards here, actually. <laughs> and I many times, these are the most grateful, awesome people who choose to ride with Lyft. For example, I had a manager of up-and-coming brewing company. He gave me his business card as well as a gift uh, certificate. So he gave me a gift of, I think, like, it, it doesn't even matter, like $15, $20 to go to his new brewing uh, brew and check it out. But uh, pretty much... I realize that this community of people have been um, some of the more grateful, appreciative people that I've ever come across, right? They're, they sit up in the front with you. They engage in conversation with you. They actually treat you as a human being, and that's one thing I've seen, the difference in this versus Uber, right? Um, and it's people helping people, people servicing people, and that's what's really incredible, too. The community is so effective at uh, who it attracts and who um, who actually um, chooses to ride with us versus um, other ride-sharing companies. I'm not going to mention who, but uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of it is very, um, they treat it, they treat their drivers a little bit differently versus we get treated very well. Our lifts, our perks and benefits are much better and we actually get treated with decent amount of respect, right? So I, I think that's incredible. Yes, left here. But, um, yeah, so the people have been amazing, and I'm really looking forward to meeting and networking with many different people and just building that connection, that community of people so we can all help uh, develop and grow, you know, whatever your city, your town, your island, your state, and eventually our country, yeah? But now tell me, since I read that so many... Um, Millennials are not buying cars, and they are using ride sharing. What do you find? Is that true? Absolutely, that is unmistakably true, because more and more you're seeing it. Like I, I think I saw an example that um, they just increased the weight uh, registration for the vehicle here in Hawaii to like seven per pound, seven cents per pound now for the vehicle. So more and more you're seeing it not being realistic to own your own vehicle or own your own and drive your own vehicle. So there was, and I think I mentioned this to you, Marsha, there was a, um, a guy out in San Fran who did a, um, a budgeting report. He did like a little, uh, he logged in the information of what it cost for him to do the ride share and how much it cost for him to own and operate his own vehicle. And he actually saved money by owning his, or um, by using a ride-sharing company, yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's very true. In fact, it's very true. So now you're seeing more and more millennials just using the ride-sharing services, yeah. So yeah, does that answer your question? Does that <laughs> well, I'm glad to know that. You know, this is a whole new experience for me riding in the lift because this is my first time. So I'm really pleased with the service, and um, my phone keeps dinging and telling me where we are, and we're almost at our destination. So if you, yeah, it's on the right. Um, we are going to Mauna Kea Marketplace. Right where that, that's very good. There we go. All right, so we're about to end our fair. So I hope you guys enjoyed the ride sharing experience with Lyft and that you guys do choose to ride with Lyft in the future. And I know it could be definitely beneficial to all of us in the near future. And we're, we're going to look forward to seeing much more of what's to come as far as how there's many different new technologies being implemented with, uh, sorry, I'm trying to like <laughs> park and talk at the same time, but. Uh, oh, that's okay, our interpreter is standing right here. She's waiting on us. So thank you, thank you, thank you for this wonderful ride, this new experience. You're very welcome, it's my pleasure, Marsha, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, aloha.